Hey Flower Tribe, today I'm going to show you how to propagate your hydrangeas from cuttings. If we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip videos. So guys, it's super easy to propagate your hydrangeas and make more plants from the original plants that you already have growing in your garden. And I'm going to show you some simple steps on how to do that right now. Some of you have asked me what's the best time of year to do these hydrangea cuttings and a lot of gardeners love to do this process in spring because the plant's very um it's just kind of getting started it's got a lot of energy it's got a lot of new growth that's sprouting but you can actually do this process all the way through early fall so you can do it from when you first start seeing some of those brand new fresh green stems and you can follow it all the way up until like the, the beginning of fall like don't take it to the end of fall because you might run out of time to let those roots start to form unless you live in like a really warm climate then I would imagine you can even stretch this season out even longer. So um, like I said, it's September now, but if it's uh, in, in spring by you, by all means, try this in spring because it's probably going to be even, um, I would imagine maybe even faster results, possibly even better results because you have a longer growing season to allow those roots uh, to get established. Right now it's September. So you can do these cuttings. Um, I did a whole bunch of cuttings back in August, and I'm going to show you what some of those roots look like on my hydrangea plants that I kind of, you know, cut back and uh, they're already getting established. They're getting like ready to go and be planted in the ground. So I'm going to show you those in a minute. But these are the steps that I took. So this is a really nice hydrangea stem to do a cutting from because it doesn't have a flower. So this stem didn't flower at all this year. And the stem is still fresh green. It's not that real woody uh, base because the stem is still flexible. It's got that fresh green new growth. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to cut down. I like to cut about uh, four inches from the top. I know some people do a lot shorter. But for some reason, it seems that I get better results when I have at least four inches. And I'm going to go beneath a set of leaf nodes. So these are your leaf nodes right here. I'm going to cut it just beneath those. And about here. And I'm going to wind up stripping off, or just cutting off that first set of leaves. And I'm going to wind up leaving these leaves intact, but I'm going to cut them in half because I don't want to have that much of a leaf as I'm propagating these guys. Some people cut off even more of the leaf, like they'll shave down like this next set too, but I seem to have better luck when I have a few sets of leaves, but I do actually give them like a little trimming. And I'm gonna make sure that I put this right in water because if I go ahead and trim a whole bunch more of these and I kind of leave these out of the water right now, a lot of times this scabs over and I think it kind of delays that whole rooting process. So I'm gonna put these guys in some water. I like to do this early morning. So it's really important that you don't come out to your hydrangea plant in the middle of the day and it's exhausted and that sun's been beating on it. So the best time to cut it is in early morning. I know that some other um, gardeners like to do it like late afternoon if they're not morning people, but I find that early morning is best. So I'm gonna come in here for a few more cuttings. Once again, I'm gonna strip off those bottom leaves. I cut it beneath that leaf node. Cut off some of these leaves. And I'm gonna give these guys a little snip. I'm going to clean up my leaves in a little bit, and I'm going to dunk this right in water. Oops. Snip. This. This. These guys are really big, so I'm actually going to cut them back. Give a little snip. Give a little snip. And that's it. So now I'm going to show you what I do with these cuttings back in the secret garden. So let's take a walk. So guys, I wanted to show you what some of my cuttings look like that have been sitting in some perlite and some vermiculite. And they've been sitting uh, in this tray for about, I'd say like maybe five or six weeks. And this is what happens. I have almost like a little greenhouse effect going on here. And what I do is I made sure that this tray was placed uh, underneath like a bush in my garden. It wasn't in direct sunlight. Otherwise, all these leaves would have burnt up. So um, I have them in this perlite. It was moist, and I'm going to show you the steps in just a few minutes when we do that with the new one. But I wanted to show you what some of these beautiful, gorgeous roots look like after just a couple weeks. So check this guy out. I'm going to actually give it a little bit of uh, a dunking in the water so you can see the roots better. But look at all these beautiful roots on this hydrangea plant. I mean, is that gorgeous? So in just a couple weeks, these were the results. And I'm gonna put this guy back 
because I'm not quite ready to put them in the ground just yet. But I want to show you that other plants, I mean, you can do this with a ton of other plants, roses. And this is another plant that I took from a friend's garden. And this plant actually got these roots in only a week. So you can experiment with some of the plants in your gardens. And I did the same technique. I just kind of gave it a snip early morning underneath a fresh set of leaves. And I put it in this perlite that was already soaked in some water. And uh, look at those roots. And this was actually literally like after about seven or eight days. So different plants uh, take a different amount of time to actually start their root development. Hydrangeas seem to take a long time though. But I do have to show you that in this vermiculite, I got good results, but some of them uh, are better than others. So check out the roots on this one. Is that amazing? So this plant was actually a little bit shorter. So this was like really, really great results from like a shorter stem. So you can cut them a little shorter if you like. Sometimes I'll just cut them like with only like two sets of leaves here and super close. And this is what the results were. And sometimes I'll cut them longer. So you can kind of experiment. And this was put in uh, vermiculite. And you can tell that both of these mediums, they're very, very kind of like loosey goosey. They're not packed tight. So sometimes people will do this process with the garden soil and the garden soil is like really, really packed tight and then the roots don't come out. And sometimes you experience root rot before they get a chance to develop. But here's exactly uh, the steps that I used to get these results. So I'm gonna take this container over here. I'm gonna do a little shift. And I'm gonna take either a container or some planting trays. And planting trays are great because a lot of times they'll already have like pre-drilled holes on the bottom of them, which is terrific. Or you can use like a plastic container, but make sure that you have a drainage system. And uh, if you don't have a drainage system, all that water is gonna stay there and it's gonna wind up rotting out those roots. So make sure that there's a drainage system or you could just take a container and put one of these smaller seed trays like in there on top of either some rocks or some perlite to give it like a little bit of height. And then as the water drains out of here, it'll just go into like the rocks that are laying uh, on the bottom of this space if you don't wanna do these little holes. But Sheldon just drilled a whole bunch of these little holes in the bottom of this bin. I think I got it for, I don't know, a couple bucks. And what I'll do is I'll add some perlite. And this one actually um, is a miracle Grow. This is not an advertisement for miracle Grow, but I do like this. And this is just the one I use for this. There's a whole bunch of different varieties of perlite out there. And this is actually like a product that helps you keep moisture uh, in your potted plants. So it actually absorbs some of the water really, really well. And it kind of keeps that moisture trapped in. And it's a good medium to do some of your cuttings. But I also use some vermiculite and that's the same idea. There's all different types of um, vermiculite out there. There's tons of companies that make it. I happen to use this, this brand. I seem to like it a lot. Once again, this is not an advertisement and I'll do half and half, but you don't have to do half and half. You can just do all vermiculite or you can do all perlite. Some people like to use potting mix that's loose. Totally up to you. Just don't use a potting mix that has a lot of fertilizers because sometimes those roots don't like to have all those harsh fertilizers on them. So I like to kind of experiment with kind of half and half. And what I'll do is I'll make sure that I water in this medium first. So let me do this. I'm gonna add some water. Can you hear the roosters next door? Okay. So I'm gonna really soak this knowing that the excess water is going to drain out of the bottom. Now that I have this medium nice and saturated, I'm gonna let it drain out a bit and I'm gonna get my rooting hormone ready. So there was tons of different rooting hormones available at your gardening centers. Some people also like to use cinnamon or honey, but I find that the real rooting hormones that you find in your garden centers seem to work a little bit faster for me. And what I'm gonna do is I sprinkled it on uh, like a little piece of like plastic that I had. You never want to dip your plant directly into like the rooting hormone jar because it can infect it. You can have like a whole bunch of um, like, you know, like like things that you don't want to wind up in this bottle will wind up in there. So just sprinkle a little, a little bit on either a paper plate or, you know, just like a little garden scrap. And I'm taking this wet cutting and I'm going to dip it in the hormone. I'm actually gonna give these these one more snips because I feel like there's a lot of leaves on here. So let me just cut this guy here. And I'm gonna give him 
even more of a dip in this hormone. Give this leaf a little cut. And I'm gonna use my finger to make a little hole and I'm just gonna pop it right in and cover it. Boom, this guy's done. So we're gonna do the same thing for this guy. And sometimes what I'll even do is since I cut this stem a little bit long, I'm gonna wind up cutting it a little shorter just to make sure that it has like a fresh cut there and that it didn't dry out. So I'm gonna cut it just a little bit one more time. I'm gonna dip it in some water just to make sure that I have something that helps that rooting hormone adhere to it. And then I'm gonna give it a dip all the way around all the way around and that's just going to kick start that rooting process and i'm going to use my finger make a little hole and i'm going to bury it and i'm going to do the same thing with this guy give it a little snip once again you're right beneath those leaf nodes get that extra dose of water surround it with that rooting hormone And I'm going to put this guy in the vermiculite. Kind of feels like sand. So it's just a very loose medium instead of being packed down and making those roots have a hard time coming through. This is like a really big cutting. I like to experiment though, guys. So let's see what happens with this big giant cutting. Like this guy's twice the size of my other ones. I'm just going to see what happens. Like why not? I love that line. Why not? Maybe it'll be a taller plant that has the roots. And I'm going to put this guy in some vermiculite. This guy might be a little tall, though, when I put the actual lid on, because I want to have that greenhouse effect. So I think what I'm going to do is to trim it just a bit, just trim some of these leaves back so that it's not touching the lid. Sometimes what I'll do, I'll put these in a mixture of both perlite and vermiculite. kind of like right on that border. And I like to see which ones do best. So this one's got a little dose of both, like right smack in the middle. And they have a lot of space between them. I don't want to have any kind of mold issues. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of cover it up. And once again, I want to have that greenhouse effect on it. So I'm going to put this here and I'm going to kind of seal it. It's really important at this stage that you don't leave this out in direct sunlight because your plants will bake. And so you want to wind up putting it in a spot uh, in your garden or like near your garages and it's not in direct sunlight. So this spot here is going to get some dappled sunlight. So you can tell over here there's some sun coming in. It's hitting it a bit and it will get more dappled sunlight later on but for the most part it's in like a partial shade. Make sure that you come in here and you continue to moisten that medium. I'll come in like every two or three days and just touch it and if it feels like it's drying out I'll give it like a shot of water and then make sure that the bottom drains out. And then um, that's it. And usually in about five or six weeks, you can start seeing some of those gorgeous, beautiful roots. After I have some stronger roots, I'm going to transplant these into some potting soil, into some other pots, and let them get a little bit stronger. And, uh, and then I'm going to wind up putting them in my garden at least six weeks before the ground freezes. But I'll make a video showing you how I do this next step, and I will link that as soon as it's posted. And guys, I've made a gardening 101 course for you that hopefully will save you a lot of time, energy, and money in planting beautiful flowers in your own gardens because I chose the best of the best flowers that I grow here at Cranberry Fields Flower Farm, and I chose the easiest to grow flowers, and I made three online courses to show you how to grow them. So I'll put a link to that in descriptions below, and I hope you love that because, listen, I've made every blunder in the book in gardening and flower farming for the past decade, more than a decade, and I want to save you guys a lot of the heartache that I went through and a lot of the errors and a lot of the mistakes. So check that out in descriptions below. I hope to see you over there. And guys, please say hi to us over on our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook page because there's gardeners from all over the world and they're posting beautiful pictures of their own flowers there and they're asking and answering tons of questions. And please say hi to us over on our Instagram channel and um, I will see you guys in the next video.